Today's lead code challenge is going to be binary tree maximum pass sum. So I'll be honest with you, this problem was a doozy. It took me a long time to figure it out, so I'll do my very best to explain it, but it's definitely not simple. So given a non-empty binary tree, find the maximum pass sum. Uh, for this problem, a path is defined as any sequence of nodes from some starting node to any node in the tree along the parent-child connections. The path must contain at least one node and does not need to go through the root. So that's actually big here, it does not need to go through the root. So say that we've been giving this binary tree here, the maximum path sum would be 6 because 2 plus 1 plus 3 is 6. And uh, we could also have amounts of just 2 or 2 and 1, that would be 3, or 1 and 3 which would be 4. Um, for this example here, you can see the maximum path sum is actually 42, but that this path doesn't go through the root, right? Because the root is negative 10. Uh, the maximum path, therefore, is only just 15, 20, and 7. Um, if it needed to go through the root, this would be a lot simpler because all we would need to do is write some sort of recursive traversal where we return the maximum amount at each node. So say that we're at node uh, 20 down here, like the maximum amount that we could return uh, would either be 15 plus 20, 20 plus 7, or just 20. Uh, and you might ask, why not 42? Why can't we return the maximum amount here? Well, that's because uh, for it to be a proper path, we can't traverse through both the right side and the left side. It has to like net 9, negative 10, 20, and 15 works, but not 9, negative 10, 20, 15, and 7. Um, so when we returning the amounts that we could pull from left and right, it could only be either um, the value itself, the value plus the left side, and, or the value plus the right side. And we'll have to do that recursively. In each point, we'll have to check what the maximum amount is. So at each node, we'll need to check what's the maximum pass sum that we could create going through this node. Um, so it's a little bit confusing, but I'll, I'll show you what I figured out. So the first thing I did was initialize a variable called max current sum. Um, and I just made that equal to the uh, root value. Um, and that's, that, that, that will work for all case and purposes, but I'll explain later uh, why that needs to exist. You might ask, why do we have to set it as self? Well, unfortunately, things like integers and strings are immutable, um, and you can't really call them as a variable, like um, you can't just change them inside of a function like this. So you have to set it with self. You could do it with like a dictionary or a list, but unfortunately strings and integers, they're immutable um, and you can't, you can't do that. So let's call it DFS and what do we need to pass in? Well, we have to pass in the node and I think that might be it, just pass in the node. And the first thing we'll do is say, have our base case say if not node, uh, we'll just return nothing. Well, we should return zero here, and I'll show you why. Because what we're going to do is sum up the maximum amounts that we can pull in from the right side, from the left side, and also just itself, and say that's going to be the maximum value at, at this node. And we'll store that inside of this max current sum each time uh, that we traverse through a node. So let's start with the left, and let's also do the right side. And the very first thing that we want to do is calculate our maximum at each node. So what would that be? It would be, well, the max um, maximum amount would be, let's see, either itself, it would be this current node's value, or it would be uh, this current node's value plus the whatever return from the left side, or it would be whatever this current node's value is plus whatever return from the right side, or it would be both. It could be both because um, remember when we're storing the maximum sum, we could pull from both sides, right? It's like we're treating that as the root. So it could be both L plus R. And we need to actually calculate that here, let me see, we should return L here and return right here. And we'll do that at this part, which we'll say, okay, we're going to return whatever is the maximum between the node val uh, or the node val plus 
the left side or the node val plus the right side. And again, the reason I can't do L plus R is when we're actually storing just the left and right side, we can't bring in both paths, right? We have to choose one. And we're going to return the one that created the maximum amount. So once that's finished, I believe we should have traversed through our entire tree and calculated the maximum paths at each node. So let's just pass in the root and we'll return the max current sum here. So let me just make sure that runs. And this returns six and we'll submit it. Yep, so that got accepted. There's some ways to work around this whole issue with the, so like, I guess you can call it a global variable. It's not really a global variable, but it's basically a variable outside of the function that we're continually updating while we're recursively making this recursive call. Uh, you could write like another function outside of this. Um, you could figure out a way to actually return the value and, and update it somewhere else, but it just got so tricky that this seemed like the easiest solution that I could find. Um, and it worked for me. Like, it's a little bit messy, but I think it's self-explanatory. I don't know how optimal it is, but um, that's worked. So I was very happy about that. Thank you.